hello, hello. I am Dr. Neva with the Neve Alliance. Today, I have a special guest. And when I say special guest, really a special guest going all the way back to high school. Let's just put it out there. But he is doing big things out there and he's going to talk about it with us. Mr. Ryan Gibson. It feels so funny to say Mr. <laughs> So you just made me feel super old. You made me feel super old. Back in the boys and girls high school days, Brooklyn. <laughs> shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to Bed Stuy. <laughs> feel like you, that's that was our hashtag back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> we're just giving out shout outs on the radio or wherever. Oh my God! Um, I think back, like you know me in the early days, but we're not gonna say too much no. because you know we like to keep things mystery a little, just a little bit. A little bit of mystery, a <laughs> little bit of mystery. But I can tell you some stories. Give me a call; we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. So you know, I know that you have created what is called script therapy. And uh, I want to know why. Well, What's the why, why? And nah, why, the why is the why is always the best question for me. Um, I love the why question. It's it's the one that requires the most introspection and and deep thought. Um, about twelve years ago, two thousand ten, I I went to Nigeria, um, Africa, Nigeria to teach uh, screenwriting for the first time, um, and it was a life changing, life altering experience working with incredibly talented, but um, untrained um, young people and old people, actually. My, my class was filled with, uh, the, the youngest student was, was 22 and the oldest was 79, I believe. Um, so we had a really wide range and that spoke to how much they wanted the information. And, and we trained them on how to, you know, the art of, of telling a story. And when I returned from that, I was just so inspired by the lights in their eyes and watching those lights turn on when I gave them that information that I wanted to keep going, but I wasn't sure exactly what that looked like. And I could literally tell you how it happened. I was in bed um, at the time I was married before I got divorced, another story, <laughs> but I was in bed and with the wife and we were, were sitting there, she was asleep and I couldn't sleep because my mind was racing. And it was New Year's Eve. And I was supposed to wake her up um, a few minutes before um, the clock struck midnight. So I'm sitting there and I'm flipping channels because I really was tired of watching the, the clock tick down. I think it was like 30, 45 minutes beforehand. And I landed on, of all things, Oprah. And she was talking about choosing to live your best life and how difficult it seems for some people to choose themselves. And it was like an epiphany hit. I realized I had consistently never chosen me in my life. I was consistently putting myself second, third, fourth, fifth on my own list and putting everyone else's wants, needs, agendas ahead of mine for good or for bad. And when I realized that when I had that moment, I said, you know what, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start a business. And I woke her up um, and she was like, is it, it's like, is it time? I was like, no, 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 I'm starting a business. And she looked at me and she said, okay. <laughs> and then she got up to freshen herself up. And I, I looked and I sat there and I said, thanks, Oprah. And the next day, um, New Year's Day, uh, 2011, I began the business of starting script therapy. Um, at first I was gonna do script doctoring because I had been, I had, you know, I lived in Los Angeles. I'd been, I moved out there to, to become a writer and had had some success here and there working on different shows. Um, um, the last show I'd worked on at that time was Criminal Minds. And I'd worked on a bunch of other TV shows as a production assistant or writer's assistant, different varying levels. But all of it was good because I learned so much. But during all that time, I was always one, the guy that when my friends wrote something, they'd give it to me and they would be, they would value my feedback. Um, and I valued making sure that I gave constructive as much as possible feedback. So one of my friends had always said to me, yo, you should be doing this for a living. This is what you should be doing. Like on top of writing, you should be helping other people. And so I took that into this mindset of, of doing it. 
uh, of starting this business. And I, as I said, I started out wanting to be a script doctor because that was the term that I knew. Um, so I looked up the term because I, I was always the guy who needed to understand what stuff means. I needed to know if I'm going to say something, I need to understand what does this term mean for me. And I looked it up and everywhere that I looked it up, it was always around, centered around fixing the script. Whatever somebody wrote, it was always about if there was a problem with it, the script, the script wasn't right. It was about fixing the script, fixing the script. And my experience in Nigeria had taught me that it wasn't the script that was the problem. That if you wrote something and it wasn't what you wanted to write, it didn't magically appear on the page. That was you. So I realized what I really wanted to be doing was working with the person to figure out why did you not write what you wanted to write so that I can break the cycle and break the blocks that we, the psychological blocks that we create for ourselves to address the story that we really want to tell, to help them find their voice and tell their story. And then I realized that what I was really saying, I didn't want to be a doctor, I wanted to be a therapist. So I said, well, I'm a script therapist. And there, and it was born and I created the website and I had it going, had the website going for about seven years. And then I didn't renew it one year, um, again, going through some rough stuff and then just kind of let it go, but continue to get clients through word of mouth. People kept calling, you know, cause they would, they'd be like, oh, so-and-so told me they work with you and I need your help. And, and I continue to work um, doing it even after the business of the business of it all sort of faded into the background of life. You know, at that point, three kids, wife, you know, life, stress, all of that. Um, and that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's how it got going. It, it got going out of the, the, the brutal necessity of me figuring out that I needed to be doing something that was uh, uh, fulfilling to my soul. Like it was a calling. You know, I, I always felt like writing was my calling. And I fought against the idea that teaching was my calling because because let's be, let's just face it, teachers are broke. Teachers don't make no money. You don't make no money being a teacher. Let's just keep it real. Let's keep it 100. Right. right. You know, it's, and I'm keep it, there's not a teacher that will turn in and go, yeah, that's, mm hmm. Right. Okay, I, I just want to go. Say, no, go. I just want to say, go. I have said this and I, I fight against the word teacher because I'm mm. a trainer, right? I'm a professor. But the word teacher always associated with the core to yep. me Facts. and I love, I, I love <laughs> money I love a certain kind of lifestyle so it scares mm -hmm. me so yep. it's so funny that you just said that but I also want to say that um growing up being in a classroom in high school I recalled mm -hmm. that writing from you I recalled all of that that's so funny so, you said because I, I I don't because <laughs> at that point I hadn't claimed it it hadn't you know, I didn't claim that I was a writer until I was 25. So it was a good 10 years after we knew each other that I got into that space. Because being in this industry and being a writer or creative is an internal conversation. Because there's no class you can take that's going to stamp you. And then you walk out and go, hey, I'm a writer, hire me. Hey, I'm an actor, hire me. You know, hey, I'm a director, hire me. That it, you have to claim that and then you have to go and get other people to believe it um, because it's unlike being a doctor where if you get a, you know, you go to the medical school, you're a doctor. You can go be a doctor. Chances are you'll get hired somewhere to practice medicine or you can just start your own business uh, and be a, you know, private a practitioner. Same thing with a lawyer. Hell, even a plumber, you know, <laughs> can get a certification and then go be a plumber. But mm -hmm. the reality of creative work is it's super subjective. And, and people have to see it, but first you have to believe it. Um, so that's been part of the work. That's also part of the work I do with a lot of the, 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 the emerging writers is to remind them that this is what you chose. You know, as much as it chose you, you chose it. And you have to claim it first in here before you want someone else to see it out there. And I understood that from my own experience. So I was, I was speaking from an experiential place and getting them to understand. So, but yeah, the, the, the getting the why of it all back to that, this has been about ensuring that I spoke to that internal calling that was telling me, you're a teacher, go teach. 
I know it's poor. I know it's going to be a struggle, but teach nonetheless. But it didn't take away from the gift of writing. And the fact that I still continue to write even now, excuse me, that I still continue to write even now. Um, but knowing that the script therapy spoke to a part of myself that screamed out for the ability to help other people to tell their stories and to tell it the way they want to tell it. And that was the, the takeaway from like my first client watching that guy look at me and go, you get it. You understand my story. And I'm saying in my head, I'm like, no, no, you understand your story and you just explained it to me. That's what it is. And I'm just reflecting back to you what you gave me. And, and those moments, ah, those are those moments where you get a big smile in your mind and yeah, you, you light up and you, you could, I can walk on a cloud for, for weeks on that, as, as well as the check that he would give me as well. <laughs> so those things. So let me ask you something, Ryan, just a little in the process, like, do you, think how would you say was it easy for you to build or it took time because that's you know the business of it was it what was it like it was hard um it is hard um because um this business is so subjective that people don't always know your value until they meet you and then they it's i mean if you go to you don't go to the the doctor and asked to see his medical license or his grades from medical school you could be dealing with the guy who finished last in his class but it doesn't matter he's still a doctor you know so the reality is that when people find you found me what would tend to happen is i would have the the initial meeting and we would talk we talk about their project either i would get it or i wouldn't and i knew that that was a function of whether or not they got it. And I would try to explain that to them. And if they didn't understand it, then we just wouldn't work together. Because I didn't want to waste anyone's time and I damn sure didn't want to take anybody's money if I wasn't going to be able to offer them something. So the build out took a lot of time. The first, my at the beginning I was charging because I didn't believe in my worth. I was really, my rates were really low. I was, I think it was like $50 at first. And then somebody yelled at me and said, are you insane? you know, after I'd given them some, some notes, they were like, this is worth way more than that. So I went and looked at what script doctors were charging and the range was ridiculous. And I couldn't quite wrap my brain around what I felt I was worth. And it, again, that took time. That was a whole other journey. But then as clients started coming to me and then as I found clients, like even my friends, I had to charge them. And of course they always, everybody want a friends and family discount. So I would, even at $50, they want a friends and family, family discount. But then I, by the time I got it up to like $150 an hour um, to now being $300 an hour and being able to charge that and say it without, with confidence and look at people and go, yeah, so I'm $300 an hour and either they're going to freak out or, and if they freak out, then I go, hey, we can work out a way for you to pay that. Um, but that's up to you. If, if it's too much for you, then, you know, I recommend you look for someone else. But the reality is you get what you pay for. And I know, I, I know I'm actually worth way more than that, to be honest. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but I got to keep it real. Right. So pocket and, and I know the next conversation is going to be 500. But and that that's part. where it needs to That go. part. That part. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when they come back around, real talk. Yeah, we, <laughs> but But just building out. So there's a lot of. With any business, there is a lot of, and a, and a business that's run by you for you. Um, there's a lot of hard forth debate in, within yourself about, you know, can I charge this? Should I charge this? When you're setting your rates, um, as well as um, just finding clients. And I and I had a lot of people question the the paradigm that I'd created because they felt like it was, in and of itself, self defeating because I was fixing them and then sending them away. And they said, people won't come back. And I said, that's fine. I said, but I know I fixed them. I know I helped them to figure out what was, what was broken in their story and potentially what was slightly broken in themselves, why they couldn't tell it so they could address it. And that felt good to me. And I got a lot of repeat business from people coming back and going, hey, can you read this again? I just finished this, can you read it? Because they knew that even if I couldn't, 
even if I had already helped them with the one story, they knew that at the very minimum I could help them with this next one. So there was this consistent, you know, for a long, for a good three, four years, you know, and, and I was able to eat off of that. I mean, that, I, that paid the bills for uh, like two, three years of consistent work where I was making like $60,000, $70,000 a year just on script therapy um, without having to do any other work. And then if I added to the other work I was doing, that would supplement it as well. So it was a really good little, little, little run there. But it's not easy because it requires consistent work. And in the advent of the social media age, um, there's even more opportunities and the world becomes much smaller. You can reach out to people, not just within your, your neighborhood or your zip code or your, your state. You can go you know, countrywide, then you can go worldwide to other places. Um, to begin to really support people, which I have been able to do. Well, Ryan, thank you for being so transparent because many won't even disclose that part. But my next question, um, what's next? What's next huh. for you? What are, what's on your plate right now? Uh, well, uh, right now, my biggest thing is I just finished my book, um, which was an incredibly emotional journey, but I just finished that. and. My next thing is to put that out. Um, I'm actually going to be doing what you're doing. I'm, I'm probably going to have, have a podcast to discuss some of the topics of the book. Um, the title of the book is called I'm Sorry My Molestation Inconvenienced You. And it's a heavy topic, but um, people have told me they laughed out loud reading it, which I was very happy to hear um, because I tried to be honest and truthful about my, uh, what happened to me as a child dealing with childhood molestation and how that affected the child, the teenager, and the adult, and how each one of us tried to manage it in different ways, failing most of the time, succeeding <laughs> some of the time, until I got to a place that I went to therapy and began to heal by addressing the pain of what had happened to me. Um, and that has been a 12-year journey. It's actually, it parallels script therapy, which is fine. I just realized that having another epiphany. That, it, that I started the journey of script therapy uh, right around the time that I started going to therapy for the first time. Wow. And it was, so I realized that that was me putting myself first, that moment with Oprah, thank you, Oprah. That moment was also awakening me to the realities of me needing to put myself first in all aspects of my life. It's that whole idea of the plane, the airplane analogy of put your mask on first, Make sure you can breathe before you can attempt to help anybody else. And I realized for a long time, I couldn't breathe because I was too busy helping other people breathe. And I was dying slowly. So great lesson, painful lesson. And I'm excited to put the book out, hopefully, at the top of the year, February, March, you know, thereabouts. Just putting some finishing touches on it right now. Awesome. Ryan. You know, we're here, you know, kicking it back and talking and just, but at the same time, I know you are super busy and you're doing a lot. And I know you, I believe you said you're going to South Africa. Yeah, I'm supposed to be, I'm, I'm, I'm working with a, a, a production company, Kumo Studios. And uh, I've been working with them as a friend of mine's company, been working with him for the last like three, four years. Um, we did a short film together um and called the zoo that got a lot of love out here on the uh, festival circuit but but it was during covid so it was a very weird time and then now um since then since we worked so well together we actually went to to Botswana where he he lives he's from america he's america he's an american actor on one of the top shows on on online on streaming called uh, yellowstone I'm, i don't know if you're familiar with it um but he's one of the actors on the show denim richards and we started working on um, uh, a show for Botswana that was set in Botswana that told a particular story about the diamond mine industry, a fa two families battling over the diamond mine industry in Botswana. So very kind of Romeo and Juliet meets succession. And so we've been working on that um, and we're heading back there to, to, to work, to do more work on that as well as some other projects because he got married to a Botswanan woman and is excited about bringing more African content, as am I. Because I feel like there's, have, having been to Nigeria 
over the course of the last 12 years, like seven or eight times teaching screenwriting, the one thing that I keep seeing consistently is how talented these young people are and how much their voices aren't heard. And if Black Panther and Wakanda Forever is telling us anything, it's that these types of stories, these different stories, these African stories are exciting to people and they're interested in them and they want to they want to see them. So we're so we're excited to be able to take some of these folkloric tales that people have never heard of, um, stories of our ancestors. Um, like they are constantly bombarding me with different tales that I would never have conceived from my American POV. And, and I say, oh my God, I can't wait for you guys to be at the Oscars. I can't wait to see you walk across the stage and get that little statue and basically almost throw a, a finger up to the world like, look, we told you so that we were this talented, you know? Korea's done it, India's done it. China will probably do it because they have incredible storytellers. I'm just, I wanna, I'm just really excited to be a part of helping these African storytellers get their stories out and the African filmmakers. And so Ryan and I can't wait for you <laughs> to walk across the stage. Uh, Oscar, <laughs> right? hey. Yes, yes. <laughs> One thing how can they find you? Um, how did, uh, in Nigeria? No, how can someone reach out to you? Oh, to reach out to me. Oh, um, you can find me at Script Therapy um, on IG. Um, you can obviously, you know, Google me and or you can look me up on, um, uh, what's the other, it's all these different, I mean, I'm out there. You can find me. I'm not, I'm not hiding. Uh, the yeah, hardest definitely. place would have been IG. IG would yeah. be because I, because I don't, and I'm doing a better job because my manager is always yelling at me. You need to, you need to post, you need to post. So, you know, and then I'm going to be with the book coming, um, I'm going to be creating a website specifically. Um, and this is going to, this, this is so like difficult for, for, for me, but a, a website for me, <laughs> which is weird to say, it sounds so Nothing egotistical. weird about it. It sounds so narcissistic. It's Nothing. all about me. <laughs> <laughs> we put a website, all you're going to see is you, this. You know it's yours, so and you already claim it, so just yeah. put it out there, yeah. right? It's, just, it's, it's, it's the work of putting yourself first. That's consistent. But, um, and, and, and being okay with knowing that you've got to, you know, if there was a phrase I'd, I'd probably scream out to everybody, I would say breathe. Just make sure that you're breathing before you go try to help anybody. Just take a second and make sure that you're breathing. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Because uh, I tell myself that, I tell my kids that when they get frust flustered, I'm like, mm -hmm. take a breath. Just take yeah. a breath. So, yeah, um, so that's what I've been doing is taking a breath getting my stuff together for 2023, which I think is gonna be an amazing year. Um, not, just, not just for myself, from, but from a lot of the people I've been working with, a lot of my clients have TV shows that are hopefully coming out next year. So I'm super excited for them. Um, and there are opportunities all over the place. So I think I say to anyone who has a story and they wanna tell it and they're struggling with the how of it all, um, find me. Come find me. Look, check me out on on Instagram and send drop me a DM and let me know, and then we can get on it. Cause I cause the script therapy website is down, and I don't think I'm gonna put it back up, because I think that that's there. It's I think it's known. Um, I think what what I'm more focused on now is continuing the work that I'm doing now, and I think part of the teaching is this book, is being able to speak to the struggle of what happened to me but also what continues to happen to other black boys black girls people of color and everyone this is not a this is not a specific to a race issue but molestation and trauma of this kind sexual emotional physical trauma all these these things are a per, a world problem um, and we tend to brush them aside Every time someone says the word molestation, they say it with a molestation. They, it, it always comes down an octave because there's a something about it that people hold some kind of shame around. And then you wonder why it's hard for the, the person who's been subjected to it to be able to speak about it, especially men. Uh, I believe the stats are that one in every five, um, one in every, no, one in every three women will be or has been assaulted, which is, horrendous um, in some form or fashion by the time, you know, they're, I think they're in their thirties. And then they said one in every five men. 
um, will be sexually assaulted or, or will have been sexually assaulted by the time that they're 25. And I sit there and go, I think that number is a lie. I think it's probably more on par with women. That, and it's probably even maybe even one in two. And I say that because men don't report. And because men don't report, the numbers are skewed as a result because it's, it attacks the machismo and all the, the things that sit inside of us that say, well, we can't be a victim as a man because that's how we're socialized in this society. But, you so know- Ryan, thought, this, is, um, this is in your book, right? Yeah, all of this is in the book. Yeah, the, yeah, so definitely guys do, when is, when is your book? Um, well, the, the hope is, because I'm self-publishing, I mean, and that's a whole, you know, part of the business of business is understanding that when you're doing, when you're having conversations that are difficult in a book form, not everybody's gonna wanna turn around and be like, hey, come, we'll publish you. Um, and the realities are when you're not super, super famous, when you're not Viola Davis or, you know, The Rock, <laughs> you're not, no one's rushing to, to grab, to put your story out in that way. Right. So you have to, to do it. So I'm gonna self-publish and then I, my, my people who support me and have been supporting me since I've been writing this for the last 12 years and who've read it already believe strongly that once it goes out and people start reading it, that it will be one of those things where they'll come find me. So fingers crossed for that, but that's not why I wrote it. I wrote it for the, for the little boy inside of me who was injured and who went through the trauma and who in high school was running to the library, looking up psychology books, trying to understand what was happening to him and why it was happening. And what did he do wrong? And why was he so punished? Why was he bad? What, you know, all these deeper questions. And the reality was he didn't do anything wrong. Um, that what was happening was happening to him and he wasn't a, a, a co-conspirator in the, the journey of it all. And that took, again, therapy and the work and I'm writing it for him to free him from that pain, to free him from that journey so that he knows you didn't do anything, kid, that this, this is what happened to you. And you can release yourself from any guilt, shame, anger um, that you're holding on to, that, that, that you're somehow complicit in the journey. And, and then hopefully, if anybody else connects with it, more power. And I, that yeah. makes me feel great. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for no, your thank time. You. And no, you thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, again, guys, you could reach him out on IG. Yeah, script at script therapy. underscore therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so I look forward to people uh, DMing me. Feel free to do so. Feel free to follow me because uh, I'm trying to do as, as much as I can to, to be better. <laughs> Put myself and out social there. media. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you, Ryan. And thank until, you, Neva. <laughs> until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.